Welcome back to the Game Collection. Over the years, I've focused an awful lot on the classic RPGs that inspired my love for the genre and in turn inspired this series of reviews, but I think it's about time I took a look at an RPG that itself was inspired by these classics. Developer Something Classic sent to me a copy of Shadows of Adam for review, so let's see how they did. Is Shadows of Adam itself a mere shadow of the RPGs that came before it? Or does it manage to stand on its own two legs as a modern day classic? I am Super Derek, and this is Shadows of Adam. Shadows of Adam is a turn-based Japanese-style RPG that's available to play on PC and Nintendo Switch. It was developed by Something Classic after a successful Kickstarter campaign raising over $20,000. Shadows of Adam originally launched in 2017 for PC and was just recently ported over this year to the Nintendo Switch, which is the version I played for this review. The story of Shadows of Adam follows Kellen, son of the hero Orazio, and his childhood friend and adopted sister, Azrael. Several years ago, Orazio set out on a journey never to be heard from again, leaving behind his children and a dark secret. It is in this world that our story picks up. Kellen and Azzy go exploring the Tangle, a treacherous and poisonous gnarl of twisted thorns and vines, in search of the source of the blight. Along the way, they come across Curtis, a powerful monk who helps the duo out. Upon discovering and defeating a monstrous carnivorous plant, they find a magical tome buried within the trunk of a tree. It is then that a vision of Orazio appears, pleading to Azrael to help him before vanishing. With that, our small band of characters go off on a journey to find Orazio and get to the bottom of that creepy magical tome. The game gradually leads the player through several towns and dungeons in search of magical crystals magical artifacts, and running from an evil prince hell-bent on capturing Azzy for her sparkling magical abilities. Along the way, we uncover the history of magic, the origins of the artifacts, and meet several fun and interesting characters along the way. The overarching story of the game itself isn't really where the writing of this game really shines, though. That would be in the dialogue. Shadows of Adam is very self-aware and breaks the fourth wall often. The writing is clever and whimsical enough to keep the readers engaged, but never goes so off the rails as to border on parody. Some of the most charming and memorable characters are the pirates obsessed with cleanliness, for example. Shadows of Adam walks a fine line, and in doing so tells a story that is accessible to newcomers of the genre that may be appreciated even more by veterans. The writing helps make every character interaction a joy to watch, and loads of fun to voice act during my Twitch streams. A magical girl would sparkle, wouldn't she? I... I suppose it's... Of course she would. Oh, how I miss her. I've never felt such tender hate. I must be falling in love. Another area where Shadows of Adam comes into its own is in the gameplay. There are no random encounters in Shadows of Adam, which I know will be a huge selling point for some of you out there. Something Classic borrows from the likes of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest by strategically placing enemies at key points within dungeons to help make sure you never find yourself needing to grind as long as you fight the monsters in your way. This provides a perfect balance to battling, exploration, and puzzle solving. The fact that there are some real head scratchers in the game and you don't have to worry about random encounters while problem solving is the way things ought to be. Because trust me, the puzzles in this game are hard enough as they are without the extra distractions. Once you really get into battle though, that's where things start to get particularly interesting. The AP system is a new take on magic that I had never considered before, and it results in some really great flexibility. MP functions differently in that rather than skills or magic requiring a set number of points from a pool to cast, it costs a set percentage of your points. At first, the distinction is subtle, but it has some unique implications as the game progresses. 
Typically, as you get stronger in other games, your mana pool increases and your old spells become obsolete as enemies get stronger and as you gain better skills. The spells you learned early on cost practically nothing to cast, but do practically nothing anymore, so why bother even having them? In Shadows of Adam, though, that spell always costs the same percentage of your mana pool, and that skill gets stronger as your character does, so spells that you like never become obsolete. In addition to this, each character passively recovers 15% of their AP after each round of battle and each time an enemy is killed. So, if you use a skill that uses 45% of your AP, at the end of the round, you'll have 70% of your AP on your next turn. Because of this, you can't spam your highest level skills each time around, but you can use them often enough to still feel ultra powerful. And you don't even have to worry about hoarding your ethers either. Another huge point in favor of Shadows of Adam's battle system is the fact that buffs and debuffs work beautifully. There's also a unique item fusion slash crafting system called Grand Reliquaries, which allow you to combine the effects of accessory slot items. There are elemental and attack type strengths and weaknesses that you can exploit during battles, as well as these effects can be stacked and leveraged to ludicrous efficiency. Loyal viewers of the show already know I'm a huge fan of that. The flexibility in this battle system makes the game feel especially fast and fun. The downside, I suppose, is that you can make the game feel pretty easy once you've got a good understanding of these mechanics, and you can even trounce some endgame bosses in just a few rounds, but if you're not leveraging the system, it can still provide a fun challenge from beginning to end. The world presented in Shadows of Adam seems like a pretty standard Renaissance period equivalent setting with relatively little magic on full display compared to other similar games. This ties into the lore of the game quite nicely, actually, though there are a few locations and characters who are distinctly magical in nature. World exploration takes place on a world map, which is always a welcome sight, and overall, Shadows of Adam perfectly replicates the feel of a 16-bit era RPG world. Shadows of Adam is also a very pretty RPG that mimics the style of 16-bit RPGs, but doesn't necessarily limit itself to those same constraints, and benefits from an expanded palette and transparency layers, but doesn't go overboard to the point of breaking that 16-bit aesthetic. The animations are fluid, the environments are detailed and well-crafted, you can tell that the pixel art aesthetic was deliberately chosen out of love for the art style and not as a cost-cutting measure, and feel like they could have worked on a Super Nintendo and would have been mind-blowing on that system. The sound design overall is fantastic too. Sound effects are so satisfying and feel impactful and... I'm kind of at a loss for words for what I mean here, but maybe... chunky? They sound 16-bit, but they sound kind of real, too. I can't quite explain it, but I'm in love with these sound effects here. And the love that I have for the sound extends into the music of Shadows of Adam as well. The music was actually so good at times it stopped me in my tracks and I just wanted to stop and listen to it. The music is really just a perfect fit for the game, both in style and in tone. And even now I get songs stuck in my head from the game. This is about the part where I would normally talk about bugs in the game, but at this point there aren't really any to speak of that I know of. There were a couple here and there that got patched early on, so you'll want to make sure your game is fully up to date. I suppose that if I really had to nitpick here or there, I think it was a little too easy to accidentally progress the text too quickly and miss some lines of dialogue. And in the beginning of the game, it moves along a little too quickly and you can miss some of the text if you're trying to read it out loud, like I typically do during streams. But without that handicap, you're probably going to be fine. Shadows of Adam is currently about $15 or so on Steam and the Nintendo eShop, and most people will finish it in about 20 hours or less. But because I enjoyed the game so much, I pretty much did everything that there was to do. And that took me about 30 hours, which I've heard may be some kind of world record for the slowest run, but sometimes when a game is this good, it's worth the extra time to slow down and savor it. And I particularly loved my time with Shadows of Adam. Between the playful writing that's a pleasure to read and a flexible battle system that I could really sink my teeth into, 
I can't recommend this game enough. Shadows of Adam is an amazing deal at just $15, and if it ever got a physical release, I'd easily pay three times as much for a physical copy, like the fake one that I made here. I'll show you how I did that in another video. The game's a lot of fun to play, and that's why it's earned itself a spot in the game collection.